Nothing is more frustrating than spending so much time on your research project but not publishing it because your data is a mess and you can't analyze it, or no journals are willing to accept your paper because there is a major study flaw. Hi, this is Dr. Jia, and today I'm going to talk about the steps you need to do before diving into your research project. If you follow these steps, it will save you tons of time and headache. Number one, apply for approval from the Institutional Review Board, IRB, or Ethics Committee before you start your research project. Some projects are quality improvement projects or analyses of large data sets, and they are technically not human subjects research and are exempt from IRB oversight. Although some journals are willing to accept your research paper without IRB approval, most high-impact journals would want the IRB to make that determination. So if you want to play big, or you want to have more options when it comes to choosing a journal article to submit to, apply for IRB before you start your research project. And be sure to apply six to eight weeks before you start your research project because it does take time. Number two, write a research protocol. A research protocol is a detailed plan of your research project. And the main benefit of a research protocol is that it forces you to think about your study question, your study gap, your study design. And in the research protocol, you need to put in your inclusion exclusion criteria, what data you plan to collect and your data analysis plan. If your project is a simple survey or you want to get feedback about your new medical education program, you may think it's too much work to write a full research protocol. But if you use the wrong study design or collect data incorrectly, you may not be able to answer your research question. And remember, the work that you put into your research protocol now will never be wasted. Your research protocol will be repurposed into your introduction section and your methodology section when you are writing your manuscript later. Number three, read research papers with similar study design. As clinicians, we tend to skim through the method section when we are reading the research paper. But now that you are designing a study, it is time to do a deep dive on the methodology section. When you choose a research article, it does not have to be the same medical condition you're studying, but it should have a similar study design. For example, if you are looking into a survey study, then look for a survey study. If you are using a national data set, then look for a research article that is also using the same data set. So what are you looking for? Look into what data they are collecting and how they're collecting the data. Look at the outcomes and the study instruments they use. Also, be sure to read the discussion section to look for any pitfalls the authors encountered when they are conducting the study. That way, you can design your study to avoid that pitfall. I know conducting research can be a very overwhelming process, so I have created the Idea to Paper Blueprint. This blueprint takes you through a seven-step process from idea generation to paper submission. Be sure to get a copy in the link below. Number four, discuss your research plan with your mentor and if available, with your biostatistician as well. You want to make sure your study design answers your study question. For example, a cross-sectional study will not be able to compare the effectiveness of two drugs, but a randomized controlled trial will. In contrast, a randomized controlled trial will not be the best method to find the incidence rate of lupus. When talking to your biostatistician, you want to go through the statistical methods, the data you're collecting, and how you're collecting the data. For example, do you want to collect your data as a continuous variable or a categorical? And how you're going to collect the data in order to get the cleanest data set possible? You may have the best statistician in the world, but they will not be able to do any data analysis if you're giving them missing data or a messy data set. Number five, find resources that will help support your research. You can look within your institution or outside of your institution. There is one place that is often overlooked is the institutional library. Look into your library website. Oftentimes, they give you access to referencing software, statistical software, and of course, access to journal articles. And even if they do not have a subscription to a particular journal, they have the capability of doing inter-library loans. Also, look into your research department for educational sources. Sometimes, they even provide writing support groups and research support groups. Outside of the institution, think Google and YouTube. There have been countless times where I was stuck in my data analysis and Google and YouTube gave me the answers. So learn to be resourceful. I have been talking about things you need to do before starting your research project. These can make your research process a lot smoother 
and can actually increase the chance of your paper getting accepted. If you like this video, you wouldn't want to miss the next video where I will talk about the top reasons why editors and reviewers reject papers. I'll see you there.